Good evening, Kevin. How are you? I, I thought that you were not able to come to the class today. You just got out. I just got out, yeah. Okay, very good. So, well, I'm happy to see you here. I, I thought that you were not going to come. Yeah, I got the same, but I just finished the finished. Basically, it wasn't great. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Right. So you were on break. It was on break. So, at the end, I can take it. Not so like it, but... Are you going to work it's... tomorrow, Kevin? Uh, you told me that you work in a call center, right? Yeah, no, tomorrow is my day off. Oh, I see. So you usually have your day off on Thursday or? Thursday and Friday. Thursday uh, and Friday. I schedule things every three or four months. It depends too much on basically what we do and how many calls we get or if we need to receive the training or something. So it changes. So sometimes you your day off is on Thursday and then sometimes it is on Friday, right? Is that correct? Well, I have two day off, two days off. Friday. Oh, you have two days off. Okay. Thursday and Friday. Yeah, it's one of the benefits we have from company. Oh, very good. I have almost four years with them. In eight years, I will have four years. And yeah, since God, I have opportunity to improve my English. I remember first time I talked to I see. many people they speak differently. I remember my first um call was a uh, Cuban person. Um he was a a very kind man. The next call was uh, an mm -hmm. American person. Mm -hmm. She had an accent weird, I remember. Okay. She was, I don't remember her name, but I remember <laughs> what she wanted. It was almost four years ago. <laughs> I learned. So, I don't know if you have listened or if you have watched before a video on Instagram where a father man says, You can call me in your home. I don't want a lot of so I remember when my first class or my first uh, day at work, I heard something like that. I said, "Could you repeat slower?" And the customer just hung up. So oh. now I can understand a bit better. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's right. what we learned. Yeah. Okay. Well. That's very interesting. And I think that probably that is something that happens uh, when you are new to a job, you probably don't have like the knowledge, you don't have the experience. Uh, probably it, it is hard at first. And that's something that happened to me as well. Because I remember when I, uh, my first day of work and I was like very nervous. I was like, I was thinking all the time that uh, I would make a mistake and uh, I was really nervous, to be honest with you. I was freaking out. So, and at the end, uh, I actually work in a call center too. So, I work for teleperformance about, uh, let me see, about six or seven years ago, I think. And it, something similar happened to me. Uh, I had my first call. I was very nervous. You, you know how they uh, put you in this uh, uh, nesting group so you can start taking uh, some calls uh, first before you get into production. So I took my first call and I was very nervous. And I I remember, just like you said, I can remember uh, the name of the person that answered the phone, but I can remember that he was a man and I was very nervous. And at the end, I think that he hung up too because I, I was so nervous that I couldn't pay attention to whatever he was saying. So that, it, that was really hard for me. Yeah, it's complicated because I don't know, um, something that helped me a lot to understand how is a call center environment 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the series Malcolm in the Middle. Mm -hmm. uh, the point here is the last chapter in the last season of that series, uh, one of the main characters got a job working in a call center. Mm -hmm. So this man uh, is working and got a call and the customer is trying to cancel a service. I don't remember the service. Mm -hmm. So this guy tried to persuade this customer and by the end of the chapter, they basically, or the episode, that's the right word, they basically uh, get the customer involved, not in only one product. Mm -hmm. They sold about um, 10 or 12 pro more products. So, <laughs> yeah, I it, I know that it's a amusement uh, show, but it's really interesting because it's a way, uh, at least in my experience, I had to work because the English I uh, speak in the, in the, the sound or with my LOB is different mm -hmm. to the one we used to practice. For example, one of the days I was talking with my uncle, he's also starting with you um, in level one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, with you with English for the field. So, he, the last time I talked to him about about it, so he told me that English is simpler than the way we learn, the way, the way we have conversations with teachers, with or with our partners, classmates. However, it's always good to know it. Because I don't know if you have had experience to talk to an, an American and a British people. Yes, they, they have. They have. have different accents. They have different uh, accents. I remember the last time, to be honest, I have talked in English with a Chinese person, Egyptian person, a Thai, all woman, some African and Arabic people, um, some Mexicans, Americans, Canadians, uh, one person from Russia, mm -hmm. and the other one was from a country in West Europe. But she was was a woman, maybe 30, 35 years old. And my point here is their accent, the vocabulary, it's different from each other. We might yeah. say, yeah. they have 25 years like me, they have 24 years like my uh Co-workers, but they have different kinds of, I mean, points of view. They see the life in a different way, so the vocabulary is changes. Different. Yes, different. because here, here we do not say, "Hey, go and put the washers." Yeah, I mean, the dishes in the dishwasher, and turn on the machine. Right. You will say, "Hey, go and wash the dishes." Right. Or there, we, or even they, they used to have many devices to make their life easier. In the, I mean, wash the dishes, wash the clothes. Um, some American people, they have uh, even a device to dry the clothes and they do not put on the on a wire in the sound like we do. So <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. Because and I don't I don't remember if it was yesterday or one of these days you were reading the post I did on the on the website about the experience I learned with a customer about the Independence Day in the United States. Yes, yeah I remember that. Yeah. The, the customer told me here for Christmas Go uh, to the church, we pray, we sing, we pray, 
then we say, we give thanks to God and say, hey, God, sex by giving me this wonderful year. But in contrast, in our country, we don't do that, at least not all of the people. But so far, right. we, go, we go and spend money on some, some clothes, new, new garments, you might say. Or even we spend that day on the beach, or we go to the <laughs> next morning. Right. So, but right, right, you're right. Yes. The different, the different situation is for Americans. What we do for Christmas, they do for the Independence Day. They mm -hmm. go to parks. They get drunk with beers. They eat uh, many beef, pork. So it's interesting. Even the way we celebrate help us to understand multiple factors in people's life. <laughs> right. It's really interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, you're right. I, I read that story that you posted on the forum. And yes, it's very interesting because just like you said, they have a different way to celebrate than the one that we have. Because just like you said, uh, for example, here in El Salvador, we uh, on Christmas Day, we just like a lot of people just get drunk. People go to parties, they go to the beach, just like you said. So we have a different way to celebrate because they usually just um, probably spend time with family. They just uh, pr probably pray, just like you say, uh, just like you said, uh, they go to church, that kind of things. So uh, things are different in that in that way. So yeah, that's totally right. Uh, another thing that I noticed is how they celebrate, uh, like for example, uh, New Year's Eve, because here uh, it is common that we have the day off, that we, for example, we go to, to the beach. A lot of people go to the beach on uh, New Year's Eve, and that is not something that they do in the U.S. I think that they just don't care that much about that. Uh, probably you know that because if you work in a call center, so people uh, from the U.S., they, I mean, for day is just like a, nor a regular day. They, they don't really care about that. So it's, it's a little bit different when it comes to that. Mm, to be honest, I have worked with some uh, older people. Mm -hmm. And at least for December 24, 25, and December 31st, and 1st of January, they don't call too much. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's because they have all the people, they really don't have too much to do, mm -hmm. but don't call too much. Okay. It's, to be honest, I used to work um, cleaning computers, mm -hmm. removing viruses, updating updating systems. Uh, now I work with that and printer, so it's not that different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they do not call much in that place. They don't call that uh, much. They just, thank you. They just um, call and say, hey, uh, I know it's holiday, but mm -hmm. I need to get my computer clean. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, I know that it's a holiday, but my computer is not working right. Mm -hmm. And what I remember that was really funny was a customer telling me, hey, I know this is a holiday. <laughs> uh, most people don't care, but um, me neither. I pay a service. So, yeah, let's do that. So, <laughs> I remember many experiences we had, and most of people, <laughs> the way they understand it, the way holiday. Hmm. For example, for us, Christian people, we have a holidays like the Holy Ring, or when we have the holiday in capital, and maybe we would like to have uh, those days off. Whereas, mm -hmm. say, hey, companies give me those days, please give me the whole Holy Week, but they don't. However, they do go and ask to an Indian people, I mean, an Indian person or the Indian people, mm -hmm. 
they that every celebration as a day off. So if they have to go and worship Ganesh or any other day that they have, they have the day. The day is granted forever. So they, they say um, tomorrow will be, for example, the rat day because they have a temple where they worship rats or they take care of rats. I don't remember quite well. So the company will say, hey, it's okay, you can go. We go in. Mm. That day, the call center in Mumbai is closed. So you can imagine all the calls are mm -hmm. uh, to the first to the server. Right. It's really interesting. It's mm. really interesting. Yeah. I agree, Kevin. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry about uh, we were talking with Kevin. Uh, he was the first uh, to join the class. So uh, good evening, guys. Thank you so much for coming one more time. I'm happy to see you, Dinora, Karen, Walter, Josue. Thank you for coming. So how are you doing today, guys? Hope you guys are having a great day. Hello, teacher. Hello. I'm Laura. sorry for um, late. <laughs> this is okay. Uh, okay. Sorry for being late. No, that's okay. You don't have to be sorry. Okay. That's thank okay. You. I understand. Thank you, Inora. Uh, thank you for letting me know. I know that a lot of you guys have other things to do. Like, for example, just like Kevin, he said that he was at work. Uh, Dinora said that she was on her way home. So I completely understand that. And I thank you guys for letting me know if something happens because that uh, gives me an idea about what is going on. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's see, we were talking with Kevin a little bit about like, in this case, he was telling me his experience because he's, um, he, ha he has worked uh, for a call center. So he was telling me his experience uh, regarding uh, talking to people from different countries, like uh, how they have different accents, which is true. Uh, they have, you know, people have different accents and they have different vocabulary that they use. So that's one of the things that uh, could be a little bit challenging when we talk to somebody uh, in English that they if they have an accent uh, sometimes it can be hard to understand what they are saying and we were also talking about kind of like how things are different from one culture to the other like for example Kevin posted something on the forum that we have and it was something regarding how we celebrate uh, Christmas in El Salvador regarding to how people celebrate Christmas in the U.S. Like, for example, and Kevin, that's what uh, he said, what he shared with us, is that uh, in El Salvador, we usually go to parties, we drink alcohol, we uh, celebrate, uh, we get drunk, that kind of things. But in the U.S., uh, a lot of people uh, during Christmas, they spend time with family, they... Uh, go, go to church, they pray, and they do all these kind of things. Uh, a little bit different to what we do in El Salvador. So I don't know about you guys, if you know like any other traditions or any other uh, customs from any other country that you would like to share with the class. Acá tenemos un montón de feriados, ¿verdad? Yo le decía a Kevin que, por ejemplo, tal vez, en mi opinión, ¿verdad? No sé si estoy equivocado. Tal vez ustedes me lo pueden decir. Kevin dice que Tal vez en Estados Unidos también la gente toma el primero de enero como un día festivo, pero no sé qué piensan ustedes. En mi opinión, eh, yo, yo entendía, al menos yo lo entendía así, que para ellos no es tan importante quizás como es para nosotros. Pero acá en el país, el primero de enero es un día para descansar, es un día en el cual tenemos casi que todas las personas, tenemos todos los trabajadores, eh, lo tenemos como el día libre, ¿no? Es como un día festivo, pero no sé cómo funcionará en Estados Unidos, si es igual o, o es diferente. What do you guys think? Do you think that they celebrate too or do they have the day off, for example? Hi, about Peter. Karen? Hello, Karen. Good evening, all of us. Um, well, in my experience, and um, probably they don't celebrate because I haven't heard that they celebrate Christmas or New Year, I think that the 
biggest celebration for them is Thanksgiving. Right. So it's, I think it's it's most important. It is more important than um December twenty four or twenty five, mm -hmm. and even January first. Uh, they good. get prepared and they get more uh, excited about Thanksgiving. For example, they all the managers in the United States they just go off today mm -hmm. in the afternoon. So we were alone. <laughs> uh, working just uh, mm -hmm. trying to do things that we had to do but uh, a lot of people yes went off today in the I think in the at noon mm -hmm. and yeah. um yeah I think January 1st is definitely is holiday because they have it off mm -hmm. and it's the same for January 2nd oh I see I didn't so know we, that yeah mm -hmm. we come back to work uh, at least in my area, in January 3rd. January 3rd, okay. I see, very good, Karen. I appreciate that. So you you went to work today and uh, there were no managers on duty during the afternoon. They just... Uh, they, yes, they, they yes. They were just gone, right? They... Uh -huh. they, they gone today at, uh, at noon. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just send a lot of work um, to us in the morning. So we have a lot of uh, things to do. But um, for example, today <laughs> in the afternoon, I need to uh, I I need to ask them a um, mm -hmm. few things regarding a task that we are working on. And um, she was on there. She was, mm -hmm. I, I just received <laughs> an email um out of the office so oh. yeah they left today today early and definitely they are not going to work tomorrow and friday we no, usually no. have a thanksgiving and uh and friday as well but something happened and uh, people from uh, el salvador mm -hmm. and just complain about oh my team that we have um holidays in el salvador and uh -huh. united states holidays so they complain and that's why oh. they just yeah I and understand. Uh, well right now we just have the el salvador holidays so. oh my goodness that's awful so uh you normally yeah. don't uh, you didn't used to work on uh like thanksgiving and on friday on black friday actually that's like the way they call it mm -hmm. so you didn't used to work on those days, but now, because some people complained about that, you have to work yeah. on those days. You only have uh, the day off during Salvadoran holidays, right? Yeah, just Salvadorian holidays. Yes, I because see. I think we were only the only one thing here in El Salvador that have um, United States holidays oh my goodness. and El Salvador holidays. That's why... Well, so the the other yeah. guys didn't like it. They were jealous. So that's the reason they why they jealous. complained. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sad. But but at the end, we are not going to work as normal because they are not there, and we work directly with um people in management in mm. in United States. So tomorrow we have a dinner, Tim, a dinner. Oh. So on Friday we think that it's gonna be less like chill. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. what you mean. There is going to be less work to do on Friday, right? Uh -huh. That's yeah. the, the expectation that you guys have. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay, very good, Karen. Very good. I liked it. So mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah, I mean it's a shame that you guys have to work tomorrow, but just like you said, probably at the end there won't be like too much to do, right? Because if you guys have to work with people uh, that are based on the U.S., then at the end probably there will be there, there won't be like too much to do tomorrow. So, no. No. right, very good. Well, thank yeah. you, Karen. What about Jacqueline? Vamos a ver, Jacqueline, ¿qué nos puede contar cómo ha estado su día y va a trabajar mañana? Va a trabajar usted mañana, Jacqueline? Most uh, half of the day, just to cover a few things that. Uh are pending uh -huh. in the afternoon uh, our manager approves to take it off oh. so 
Good. We're going to be half of the day off. Awesome. And uh, today um, we met with the, with the team for a lunch. So. Awesome. Okay, good. That sounds we'll, good. We're we'll going to do once a month for lunch. Very good. Hey, that sounds so nice, Jacqueline. Good day. You look, actually, you look like happy today because the, the other day you, you seemed tired, you seemed like a little stressed, but now you look fine. You're looking good. Yes, I feel okay because I know that, that tomorrow there's job, I have things to do, but there's less pressure than the previous day. And uh, I almost finished with a lot of things. That feels good. I know, yes, that feels good. Like having that uh, feeling that you are about to finish something that you have mm -hmm. pending, something that's still yeah. there, but you're almost done. Yeah. That feels good. Feels good. Yeah. I, I, there were a few activities in different areas, the job, here in the classes, and uh, another thing that I used to, that I used to go for practice. And uh, there were a lot of things, but at this moment, at this point, I'm just like, oh, I'm almost finished. <laughs> this week uh, was the due date for all those things. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Very good. Very good, Jacqueline. And it feels nice. Yeah, it feels mm -hmm. nice and very good. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that you, will, you won't have to work like the entire day tomorrow. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think that when we know that we just have to work I for a few hours. I think it's not fair, Jacqueline. It's not fair because I'm gonna work the whole day. <laughs> what what do you say that is the name of your team? Just curious. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you working on the site tomorrow? No, no, from no. home. Ah, no. okay. Okay, because normally on the site they give different type of foods for celebrations like thanksgiving or mm -hmm. um san salvador's holidays and mm -hmm. they usually um, just give food mm -hmm. to all the people that is working on the site oh, i i i'd rather eat frijolitos in my house but i don't <laughs> me too <laughs> me too <laughs> i went today and the traffic was a little bit heavy also went for my son is preparing some things at school for the next year. And the traffic here in this rancho <laughs> was terrible. Oh. There were a few streets closed. I think there were accidents. I don't know. We never knew what happened. <laughs> but yeah, I think oh. it's the season, right? That is correct. I was thinking the yeah. same. Yeah, and people is driving crazy. Yep. Right now. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There were a few very important streets here in this rancho, and I, and I couldn't <laughs> arrive home faster or, or in the time that I was uh, planning to arrive. And I, I was tired. And at, uh, when I was driving, I started to have a headache. <sighs> Oh, my goodness. You, you were really stressed then, Jacqueline. So you were stuck in traffic and then you started to have a headache. Uh, did you take something uh, for that? Like any pills or anything like that? Just water. Just water. Just water. <laughs> I love to drink water. In... Good. At this moment, um, kind of relief. But mm -hmm. the bad it was, uh, I didn't understand why, why the people uh, get so stupidita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Uh, sometimes we wonder why people are so dumb. Just just like you are driving mm -hmm. and then just, you feel like, why are you not moving forward? Why are you mm -hmm. just, and that's really annoying. It's really frustrating sometimes. Yes. The, my my son's school is like okay, 20 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. It's at, at the other side of Soyapango, but it's like 20 minutes. And how from long my how long did it take you today to get there? 
Like more than an hour. More than an hour, okay. That's Over five. Hour. The rush hour. And I arrive, I think, quarter to six, just to arrive. And it was like another what 40 minutes oh my to, 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 was was tough was tough you, you spent like we are still not in november so yeah. we have to wait to december get to december to see it's what happened with the traffic it's going to be even yeah. worse <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah i totally agree with karen actually uh i remember that there was one year, I think that it was probably like two years ago or something like that. I had my vacations during December and I was really excited because I thought, man, I like December. I like Christmas. I like like the holidays and all of that. But I remember that um, I used to go out during December and there was a lot of traffic guys everywhere. And I, and I would spend like maybe like three hours just stuck on, on traffic and that was awful i was like uh at the end i i, re I regret uh having my vacations on on de in december at the end because i mean it, it was awful i mean i spent a lot of time just stuck on traffic and i i felt like i was wasting my time so now i, I think that if i can have vacations i would prefer just to have vacations uh in a different time of the year because it's it's crazy uh, it can take you hours just to get uh, somewhere. Just like Jacqueline said. And, and I mean, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Yeah, it's getting worse. But nothing like to have vacations on December and you can just stay at home without going into the traffic. So I think it's, it's great. We are going to have the last week um, off. That's true. On Monday. Yeah. That's true, yeah. It could be good if you can stay at home, right? But if you are planning on going out, like if you want to go somewhere, I wouldn't advise to have your vacations on in December because that, that's going to be really hard. <laughs> it's going to be really hard. Just like Jacqueline, uh, she spent like two hours trying to go uh, back and forth. And yeah. it's not like even that far. So it's really, really... <laughs> Yeah, and right now, even at night, really at night, 11.30 p.m. or something like that, there are a lot of cars on the street. Actually, <laughs> uh, on um, Saturday, I believe, Saturday, or no, from uh, um, uh, Friday to Saturday, mm -hmm. I have to go to pick up my sister because uh, those days she... Uh, ella termina de trabajar o sale de trabajar uh -huh. at 2 a.m. And I went for her. So she gets off and from work, uh, right? Father... She gets off. So she, like, uh -huh. she, she gets, gets off. off from work, right? Mm -hmm. mm. So <laughs> we, we were uh, coming back mm -hmm. and uh, there was, there were traffic. There were a, a line of cars at 2 a.m. And I told my dad, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. It is 2 a.m. 2 a.m. How is that, that possible? And it was a car that was uh, remolcando al otro. So one car Probably was towing the other. Because of Miss, Uni Miss Universe. Because it was... No. No. I mean, Saturday is going to be... Miss Universe, so everybody is going crazy on that days. But it was 2 a.m. <laughs> it was 2 a.m. and it was we're celebrating. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. No. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Just like you said, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. you have to see it to believe it because I mean, uh -huh. uh, 2 a.m., I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I know yes. that there was like, um, I, I can remember that there was a time when people started like to uh, wake up earlier because uh, of traffic, I mean, people would wake up around 4 a.m. or things like that. And at the end, it was the same thing. They, they would still get in stuck in traffic. So that was crazy how people 
would just try to uh, get up earlier, but at the end they have the same outcome, nothing changed. So, no, no sé si ustedes se acuerdan, hace unos días eh, yo escuché bastante por las noticias que toda la gente se quejaba del tráfico, especialmente la gente que vive por acá por los chorros, yo, yo eh, no sé si ustedes han escuchado de eso, eh, yo porque soy de por acá, de, ya les he dicho antes, ¿verdad? de San Juan o Pico, entonces mucha gente de acá, de, la que, de los Urdes, Santa Ana y toda esa gente que pasa por ahí, la gente se quejaba bastante, que decía que pues, todos los días tenían que pasar ahí en el tráfico, que tenían que pasar como tres horas para llegar al trabajo, imagínense, tres horas. Entonces la gente lo que hacía era levantarse más temprano. ¿Pero qué pasaba? Se levantaba más temprano y al final no pasaba nada. O sea, al final, aunque se levantaran como a las cuatro o algo así, a las tres, siempre había tráfico. Entonces era como que la gente ya no sabe, ya no sabe ni qué hacer. pues Es como que eh, es una cosa tan eh, increíble que ya parece que no, no, no hayamos solución. Ahora lo que están haciendo es construyendo más carriles y también van a construir el viaducto. Por acá han cortado bastantes árboles, eh, eso pues no me gusta mucho, la verdad, a mí personalmente, porque me gustaba la sombrita cuando pasaba por ahí, no, no sentía tanto calor. Y ahora pues no hay árboles ya. Eh, entonces van a hacer otro, no sé si un carril o dos más, eh, uno en cada sentido, y van a también hacer ese trabajo del, del viaducto. A ver qué pasa, ¿verdad? A ver, no sé si eso vaya a resolver el problema, la verdad. I don't think so. I don't think so, because they also, um, they built the roundabout, Cla Claudia Lars, they built that, and I think that they, they, we still have traffic. I mean, probably it's even worse than before. So I don't know, that's just the, the, the way that I, that I feel. So I don't know if that's going to help. Everybody has cars more than one and that's i think that is the problem we already see now it's easier to get a car um i remember that at the beginning of this year i spent around 15 minutes to come uh to come back uh, home now i spend around 45 minutes or one hour and i i, I wonder always how do the people uh, does to get a car so easily it is very interesting mm -hmm. because now it's, it's incredible uh, the time you need to spend uh, mm -hmm. it's really it's really frustrating it's annoying i uh, i don't like being honest with you because that's why uh, we were talking about work at home and i really love that because uh, i I, I think that I, at that time we, that I were, I used to save money, but now I spend more money, spend more time, mm -hmm. and it and don't like. Right. Yeah, I think that nobody likes it, Walter. I, I think that nobody likes to be stuck in traffic. And uh, I think that, just like you said, uh, it is easier to get a car nowadays. Like, I mean... People have a lot of options, so you can do so they can do that. Like for example, you can get a loan uh, to buy a car. You can uh, a lot of people have relatives in other countries, like especially in the U.S., that send money to the country, and they they can do that. I mean, they they can buy a car uh, in, in that way. So there are a lot of things going on that make easier uh, for people to get a car these days. So uh, they, they say that one of the options would be like to have a better public transportation. But I think that that, that's, that would be awesome if we, if we had like a good public transportation because probably we'd, we would have to spend less money and probably there would be less traffic if we had a good public transportation. But la verdad que no lo veo pasando eso. No veo que que esté mejorando el, el transporte público. De hecho, a veces siento que es peor. No sé, es la, la impresión que tengo a veces. Pero sí sería bueno porque es como esos estudios que han hecho, ¿verdad? Eh, a veces la gente, cada uno va en un carrito, entonces al final lo, terminamos ocupando un montón de espacio, porque cada quien en su carrito. En cambio, si todos nos conduciéramos en un transporte colectivo, eh, sería como mena, menos cantidad de, de vehículos en la calle, ¿verdad? Entonces habría menos tráfico. 
pero bueno, no sé si en nuestro país algún día vaya a mejorar, eh, la verdad que no sé, creo que tal vez tengamos carros que vuelen antes, tal vez, <ríe> sería bueno, ¿verdad?, un carro volador ahí, por ahí estaría bien, pasar por encima de todos, <ríe> la verdad que me gustaría bastante, I would love that, guys, <ríe> well, guys, All right, guys, so I just wanted to, uh, I really love talking to you guys, I really enjoy it. And I just wanted to present you uh, just a couple of things. I know that you already you already completed all the activities. I know that. So I just wanted to uh, present you a couple of things just so we can just go over uh, the information in case that there is something that we are missing. So I would like to share uh, this really quick with you, okay? We just have like 15 minutes left so we can take some time so we can review the information really quick, okay? So yesterday we talked about noun phrases containing relative clauses, right? So we said that a noun phrase, it is something like this, like one thing, uh, two people. Basically, uh, this is a subject that is uh, made of two words. In this case, we have one thing that is the subject, like, like here in this case. And then we have the relative clause. And we said that the relative clause, it doesn't have sense by itself that it needs more information so it can make sense, right? Uh, so that's what we uh, learned yesterday, right? That was the information that we covered yesterday. So uh, for today, we have to continue. Vamos a ver. <clears throat> Me gustaría que hagamos algo. Hablando de estas cosas ahorita que la, de las que estamos, eh, eh, de lo que hemos estado hablando en este momento, tal vez podamos hacer nosotros eh, si pueden mandarme por el chat algunas oraciones acerca de esto. Vamos a decir, por ejemplo, una cosa que en verdad extrañaría ese sería, por ejemplo, el tráfico del de Salvador. Digámoslo así. <ríe> el Salvador's traffic. I don't, I don't think so, but that's just an example, right? Digamos, por ejemplo, eh, dos personas a quienes yo eh, veo todos los días o a quienes vería todos los días, por ejemplo, eh, serían... Eh, mi, mi hijo y mi, y mi esposa, por ejemplo. Algo así. Entonces, por favor, hagamos un par de oracioncitas ahí. Solamente para practicar esta parte, ¿verdad? Eh, no sé si tenemos alguna duda con respecto a esto. Está, aquí está la estructura, ¿verdad? Solamente es el sujeto. La cláusula relativa, que sería una de estas opciones que tenemos acá. Like, I really miss. I'd be nervous about. I'd uh, do something every day. Uh, this can change, right? Uh, I would see every day for example, or I, um, uh, for example, hug every day would be my my wife or something like that. Um, we can just like try to make more sentence, sentences, sorry, uh, about this. Okay, we have noun phrases containing relative clauses. And in this case, we have as a subject, okay? Because the noun phrase, in this case, it is a subject. We're gonna see also, uh, how noun phrases can be an object, like in this case, okay? But first, I would like for you guys to maybe send me a couple of examples so we can move on, okay? Let's just do that. Vamos a ver. Por acá, creo que envió algo. Karen, okay, Karen, there we go. One thing I really hate is traffic in Christmas season. Okay, very good, yeah. I think we all hate it. Y fíjense bien acá también en otra cosa. Eh, es bien interesante. Las que hemos estado viendo nosotros acá, si ustedes observan algo, tenemos I, then apostrophus, and then we have the letter D, as in David, right? So that is I would, okay? So one thing I would really miss is my mom's cooking, okay? ¿Qué estamos diciendo acá entonces nosotros? Para que quede claro. Estamos diciendo que una cosa que yo extrañaría, ¿ok? Es cómo cocina mi mamá, por ejemplo. O algo acerca de lo que yo estaría nervioso es eh, hacer nuevos amigos, ¿ok? Eso me, me, me haría sentirme nervioso. Uh, o dos personas a quienes yo les enviaría correos todos los días es a mis padres, ¿ok? Entonces es como una especie de condicional, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando acerca de algo... Prácticamente que de, como una suposición, por así decirlo. Ok, there we go. Very good, Jacqueline. 
yes, if you didn't work from home, then you would you would miss working from home. You would miss that because uh, there has a it has a lot of benefits, right? So yeah, very good, very good. I like it. So one thing I'd really miss is work from home. It's working from home. I think that that would be probably most more most accurate. Working from home. Recordemos de que acá, eh, por ejemplo, como lo, como lo envió eh, Jacqueline, eh, estamos diciendo eh, trabajar de casa. Trabajar está funcionando allí como un nombre, ¿ok? No es un verbo. Entonces, vamos a decirlo como gerundio en ese caso. So, working from home. Vamos a ver, luego dice Dinora, two people I call every day are my mom and sister. Ok, very good, Dinora, very good. Good job. Exactamente, acá dos personas a quienes yo llamaría todos los días son mi mamá y mi hermana. Ok, muy bien. Excelente trabajo. My mom and my sister. Ok, very good. Awesome. Ok, I like it, guys. Th thank you so much. I appreciate that. So then we are going to move on to the next part. Unless you have any questions, we're going to move on to the next part. Vaya, vamos a ver acá. La siguiente parte, guys. Esta parte es acerca de casi que lo mismo, pero en este caso tenemos las eh, frases eh, de nombres, pero en este caso como objeto. Okay? Vamos a escuchar el video. Solamente dura como tres minutos y medio. So, here we go. Okay, let's see. Just, maybe, just let me make sure that we have the audio enabled because I don't want to... Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to listen to it really quick. Is what I'm going to put here. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, uh, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And we learned this sort of formula here subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object on that that's the activity. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change. What we want to do is we want to change this statement. One thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. That's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase one thing I really miss is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So uh, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my, my mom's cooking. That's becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear. So I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, see what's happening, right? So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence, to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that the verb to be also changes in location, and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking, all right, and that's the verb to be, is, let me change the color there as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase, all right? So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously it was the subject of our sentence, and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally, this is what I'm going to put 
here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there. All right. Um, but the, the noun, oh, and I, I think I colored that differently. So let me make sure everything matches here. All right, um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, right? Um, and, and so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence, and we're going to change it to the subject. So, for example, we'll say getting lost. All right, that's, that's uh, that becomes the subject of our sentence. Okay, that follows the verb to be is, and then um, that will follow. Uh, the noun phrase, all right? So we're gonna say is uh, one thing, okay? And then that follows the relative class. I'll be uh, nervous about, all right? Uh, very important, I want you to notice what happens with this preposition. This preposition uh, will typically go at the very end, as you can see, so I wanna emphasize this real quick. Um, and what I would like for you to do is to use um, the same ideas that you wrote down in the previous class, but change the order of them. The goal is to practice. As you can see, um, we, we have the same ideas here in the example. Something I'd be nervous about is making new friends. What we do is we change the order of this and we say, making new friends is something I'd be nervous about, or making new friends is something that I would be nervous about. Um, two people. All right, guys, so this is very easy, I think. Uh, proud, I mean, we just basically have to change like the order, as you can see. Like in this case, we have one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And then uh, what happens is that in this case, the uh, the noun phrase becomes the object, okay? So one thing becomes the object. It's not the subject anymore. In this case, the subject, it is my mom's cooking, right? So my mom's cooking is one thing I'd really miss. So basically we just like kind of change the order, as you can see. Um, we have one thing I really miss at the end, and then uh, my mom cooking. My mom's cooking is at the beginning, so that's the way that we change it, right? Uh, basically, in this case, uh, like like I mentioned before, uh, when we have the object, basically the object is what it is being affected by the verb. So in this case, we're saying that uh, this one thing is what we would really miss. Okay, so that's like the idea in this case. But other than that, I think that uh, I mean we you can we can use uh, both. Like one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, or my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. Uh, and they are both correct, right? So vamos a ver acá, vamos a otra vez eh, repasarlas una vez más. Tenemos el sujeto, el verbo to be, luego la el noun phrase in this case. Y por último, el relative clause, ¿verdad? Y eso sería todo. Así que, ¿tenemos eh, any, uh, any questions, guys, about this part? Do we have any questions at all? Vamos a ver. Acá teníamos más ejemplos también, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, vamos a ver. Por ejemplo, eh, tenemos este de acá que dice, Making new friends is something that I'd be nervous about. Okay? So, making new friends... That is like the subject, okay? Hacer nuevos amigos, okay? Is, verbo to be, something, I've been nervous, uh, something in this case, uh, it's the noun phrase, uh, I've been nervous about, okay? And uh, very important, he says that this preposition goes at the end, okay? And then we have the example number three, it says, my parents are two people, I email every day. Okay. Any questions, guys? Okay. No questions, right? All right. Very good. 
Bueno, vamos a ver qué más nos falta por acá. Vamos a adelantarnos un poquito. Ya casi terminamos, guys. Nos quedan eh, tres minutitos más, ¿verdad? Ya casi terminamos. So we have more examples here. Uh, we have uh, I'd be anxious about, I'd be comfortable with, I'd be curious about, I'd be enthusiastic about, I'd be fascinated by. Fíjense bien por acá en estos ejemplos. Eh, tenemos diferentes preposiciones, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, anxious about, comfortable with, curious about, enthusiastic about, and then fascinated by. Okay, so uh, we can say, for example, uh, getting lost uh, is something that I'd be anxious about, for example, okay? Or uh, making new friends is something that I'd be enthusiastic about, okay? That would be more examples of how to use the noun phrases as objects, okay? Bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a continuar entonces. That I would be nervous about. Um, two people I email every day are my parents. My parents are two people I would email every day. So what I would like for you to do is to practice making the previous sentences to those being used as the object of your sentence, sort of like the example that you see here. Right, there we go. So that's it for that part, guys. We just have... In this case, this knowledge check, which I know that you guys already completed. It says, put the, uh, put the words in order to make sentences about living abroad, right? Living abroad is living in another country, guys, just in case. Abroad means en el extranjero, okay? Vivir en el extranjero. Entonces, acá tenemos, son simplemente tres. Una cosa que yo, eh, por la cual estaría emocionado, es eh, probando, es probar la comida local. Okay, básicamente eso es lo que dice. Entonces nosotros acá teníamos que ponerlos en el orden correcto, lo cual ya hicimos. Así que no hay ningún problema con esa parte. Eh, vamos a ver acá. Pues bueno, básicamente eso sería. So, well, let me ask you guys, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, tomorrow we will continue. We will just uh, basically finish uh, with the rest of the information that we have. By the expectations, we may want to, uh, we may go over also this knowledge check and we may also get over uh, go over i'm sorry the information for the final exam just in case so we can just like do a little recap about what we learned uh during these uh last four weeks so well i think that that's gonna be it for today guys i really want to thank you again eh, muchísimas gracias guys por estar acá de verdad aprecio mucho su tiempo eh, que estén acá conmigo Así que ya terminamos. Solamente nos falta una clase más, así que si ustedes pueden venir el día de mañana, eh, lo apreciaría mucho. Eh, de nuevo, pues muchas gracias por su compromiso. Ya casi terminamos, solo nos queda el día de mañana. Así sí, que, señor. sí, dígame. Una pregunta, y este, para el siguiente curso, para el que sigue, eh, ¿va a ser en diciembre o va a ser hasta el otro año? Esa es una pregunta excelente, la verdad, Karen. Eh, yo creo... Eh, que tal vez, bueno, es que el, el detalle es de que siempre como que recolectan la información y se toman un poquito de tiempo para formar los grupos y todo eso entonces no estoy no avisar, eh, quizás. sí, normalmente sí avisan, pero la verdad que veo no tan probable que sea en diciembre la verdad, Karen uh -huh. sí, porque la para bueno, del, mo, del mes pasado a este, siento que pidieron como información así como de DUI, cosas así, uh -huh. desde antes que finalizar el curso y ahora uh -huh. no han dicho nada, entonces por eso uh -huh. es que estaba pensando que a saber si va a ser en diciembre o hasta el otro año. Uh -huh. Sí, yo voy a preguntar mañana, pero la verdad que sí pienso que está difícil, la verdad, porque ya casi estamos en diciembre, a veces se tardan un poquito en procesar la información, y si fuera en diciembre, pues prácticamente tendríamos que trabajar todo el mes de diciembre. Uh -huh. Lo cual no sé si en inglés corporativo lo hace, la verdad. Ok, bueno. Te eh, voy a preguntar mañana. mañana. Ok, sí, sí. Gracias, thank you. You're welcome, Karen. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. So, muchísimo gusto, guys. Thank you. Eh, que tengan una feliz noche y nos vemos mañana, ok? Cuídense. Un triste, moderado y excepcionalmente Bye. Bye.